Hi everyone. Start with the numbers 1 and 1. 1 add 1 is 2. And now keep on adding the last two numbers together. So 1 add 1 is 2. 1 add 2 is 3. 2 add 3 is 5. 3 add 5 is 8. Uh, 5 add 8 is 13. 13 add 8 is 21. And so on. What you get is known as the Fibonacci sequence. Now this was known about in India more than 2,000 years ago, but it's named after the Italian mathematician Fibonacci, who introduced it to the West in a book he published in 1202. And it's this Fibonacci sequence, and in particular a proof to do with it, that I want to talk to you about today. The Fibonacci numbers are generated by the recursive formula f sub n plus 1 equals f sub n plus f sub n minus 1, with f1 and f2 both equal to 1. It's obviously easy to calculate the Fibonacci numbers in ascending order just by successively adding the previous two numbers together. But what if you want to jump in at some point and calculate, say, the 100th term or the 1000th term? without having to work through all the intermediate steps. Is there a way of doing that? Well, yes there is. There's a formula named after the French mathematician Jacques Binet, who derived it in 1843, although others including Euler and de Moivre knew about it earlier. Binet's formula is f sub n equals phi 1 to the n minus phi 2 to the n all over root 5 where phi 1, the so-called golden mean, is 1 plus root 5 over 2, and phi 2 is 1 minus root 5 over 2. Binet's formula can be proved by induction quite easily, and that's a topic we've talked about in another video. But here we're going to look at how it can be proved by a different method that uses linear algebra. Let's go back to the relations by which the Fibonacci numbers are defined and put these into vector and matrix form. We can set up our defining relations as a matrix vector product. The starting values f1 and f2 can be represented as the vector 1, 1 and we can encode the recurrence relation as the matrix product shown here. When we multiply through, the first row of the matrix times the vector gives f sub n plus f sub n minus 1 equals f sub n plus 1, which is the generating formula for the Fibonacci sequence. And multiplying the second row gives simply f sub n equals f sub n. Okay, now let's go through a few iterations and see how this works out. We'll start by doing our matrix vector product for f3, f2. So we've got our matrix, our Fibonacci operator, if you like, operating on the previous pair, f2, f1, which is the column vector 1, 1, to give this product. Multiplying the vector by the top row of the matrix gives 1 times 1 plus 1 times 1, which is 2. And multiplying by the bottom row gives 1 times 1 plus 0 times 1, which is 1. So f3, f2 is 2, 1. Let's do one more iteration to get f4, f3, like this. Now, because f3, f2 is this, and f2, f1 is this, we can also write f4, f3 in this way. You might see where this is leading. At each iteration, we bump up the power of the matrix by 1, and continue to operate on the original vector. So the general result for f sub n plus 1 f sub n is just this. Now, raising a matrix to a high power normally calls for a lot of computation. But there's a method known as diagonalization which can be applied to certain types of matrix that makes it easy to figure out large multiples of the matrix. It involves writing our original 2x2 two two matrix, which we'll call M, in the form Q, D, Q to the minus 1, where D is a 2x2 two two matrix with particular values on the main diagonal and zeros elsewhere. To find D, we first need to calculate the determinant of a variant of the matrix M. 
This variant is obtained by subtracting an as yet unknown value lambda from each element on the main diagonal of m and leaving the other elements unchanged. Now we take the determinant of the variant of the matrix m. This gives us what's known as the characteristic polynomial of m, p sub m lambda. And expanding the determinant gives 1 minus lambda times minus lambda minus 1, which equals lambda squared minus lambda minus 1. When the determinant is 0, the solutions are the eigenvalues. Applying the quadratic formula, we obtain lambda equals 1 plus or minus root 5 all over 2, which you'll recognize as the phi 1 and phi 2 that appear in Binet's formula. We can now plug these two values into the main diagonal of our required diagonal matrix D, remembering that the values off the diagonal are both 0. So we have this. The next step is to find the matrix Q and its inverse Q to the minus 1. I'm not going to do that here because this is the first video we've done that involves linear algebra and I don't want to push too far ahead of what you might be familiar with. I'm simply going to state that if phi 1 equals 1 plus root 5 over 2 and phi 2 equals 1 minus root 5 over 2 then although Q can take many forms we'll choose this one because it's convenient. From this, it follows that the inverse of Q is... Now, if M equals QD Q to the minus 1, then M to the N equals QD to the N Q minus 1. So we have this. And when we multiply out these matrices, we find that this is the result. We're almost there, but there's one last step that we have to take. Remember from earlier on we had this formula. We need to put this into a form that involves our operator matrix to the power n rather than n minus 1. Now, it happens that the column vector 1, 1 is equal to our operator matrix times the vector 1, 0. So, we can substitute for the vector 1, 1 in our formula for fn plus 1 fn, so that we have this. And now we can substitute from the result of the matrix multiplication we've just done to give this. All that's left to do is obtain fn by multiplying the bottom row of the 2 by 2 matrix by the column vector 1, 0 to get this. And since the second term drops out because it's equal to 0, we're left with what we're looking for, Binet's formula. I hope you've enjoyed this. Give it a replay if you've missed some of the steps because there was quite a lot of working out. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you again in the next video.